Hello everyone, my name is Zhong Han. Today I'm going to present Efficient AI, Reducing the Carbon Footprint of AI in the Internet of Things. So deep learning is rapidly changing our lives, spawning a wide range of new applications. However, a challenge of deep learning is that it is very computationally expensive and very data hungry. For example, the AlphaGo beating Lisa Do it took 1,920 CPUs and 280 GPUs. And you know how much electricity power does it take? So it's $3,000 of each electric bill per game. It's very expensive. So given the high energy consumption on the mobile AI, it will quickly drain our battery. And on the data center for cloud AI, it will increase the total cost of ownership. And the other side, deep learning is very data hungry. It requires a lot of data to train the model. And in turn, that increases the amount of computation. For example, the uh, well-known ImageNet data set contains more than 1 million images. Such large amount of image is very expensive to collect. So such large amount of computation and such data hungriness of deep learning makes it very expensive. And there is a big environmental challenge of AI as well. So according to this study, training deep neural networks can emit as much carbon as five cars in their lifetime. So below is a study uh, showing the uh, carbon footprint of different Things. For example, the round trip flight between New York and San Francisco averaged on one passenger is about 1,900 pounds. A human life average one year is 11,000 pounds. American life is roughly 36,000 pounds. A US car, including the fuel, average one lifetime is 126,000 pounds. And you know, you imagine how much carbon footprint uh, does AI training AI models have? So this work transformer with neural architecture research, basically it's a natural language processing model, um, takes 626,000 pounds of carbon footprint. It requires a lot of GPU hours, lots of computation resource in a large data center to train and design an efficient model that is only a few percentage point better accuracy compared with conventional models. However, uh, such neural architecture search method um, is very computationally expensive. On the other side, Japan is really facing a government mandate to be more sustainable by 2050. So for under such um, heavy carbon footprint of AI, we need to be more sustainable for toward greener AI. To make AI greener, our idea is to compress a large neural network to be smaller so that it can be deployed on uh, low power hardware platforms. So the technique is called model compression and tiny machine learning. So our technique is called deep compression where we can make AI run fast and efficiently with limited hardware resource. And we can prune a large neural network by removing those redundant connections and neurons to make a large neural network small. The original Ryzen 50 is 100 megabytes. And after deep compression, uh, it can be reduced to only six megabytes without hurting the accuracy. So we can reduce the model size by 16 times um, and save the memory bandwidth. So such pruning and sparsity technique has increased attention since uh, 2015. So this is showing the number of publications uh, searching network pruning. And before 2015, roughly uh, 200 paper publications per year. And after 215 with this uh, paper, I wrote in my PhD as, as part of my PhD thesis, uh, it's gaining increased attention and a lot of publications after that, which is an effective, effective method to reduce the model complexity of deep neural nets. And now the pruning and sparsity technique is natively supported by the NVIDIA A100 GPU. For example, by using the 224 sparsity 
for every four elements, two of them are zero. So 2x uh, peak performance improvement and 1.5x measured speed up on the uh, BERT uh, task. And the pruning and quantization uh, technique is also natively supported by the uh, Xilinx Vitus AI as another example. Uh, for example, the AI optimizer of the Xilinx Vitus AI uh, can reduce the model complexity by five to 50 times with a minimal, minimal accuracy impact. So deep compression is really effective for uh, pruning and also the quantizing the neural networks to make it smaller. However, uh, there's still a big gap between the cloud AI, mobile AI, and all the way to tiny AI, where we wanna not only deploy deep neural nets on those cloud platforms and mobile platforms, but also on these IoT platforms on microcontrollers, which has orders of magnitude, less computation, less uh, power budget, and also less area, less cost than this cloud AI and also mobile AI. Today, I'm going to int introduce uh, three uh, of our recent work into two categories, optimize the computation efficiency and also optimizing the data efficiency. So let's first talk about optimizing the computation efficiency, um, covering two aspects uh, for universe. I'll introduce the MCU net for IoT devices. For training, I will cover the tiny on-device transfer learning, also called tiny TL. Let's first talk about inference, MCUNet for IoT devices. The challenge is that memory is too small to hold deep neural nets on these tiny AI devices. Compared with cloud AI and mobile AI devices, which has gigabytes of memory and storage, uh, tiny AI on these microcontrollers only have uh, 320 kilobytes of um, SRAM and only one megabyte of flash to hold the weights. So the number of resources is three or four orders of magnitude compared with mobile and cloud AI devices. So we need to reduce the peak activation size and also the model size to fit deep neural nets on these microcontrollers. However, existing efficient network only reduces the model size, but not the activation size. For example, REST-918 and the mobile NV version 2, uh, 0.75 version, they both has about 70% top point image net accuracy. Um, the model size of mobile net is reduced by uh, 4.6 times compared with ResNet. However, the peak activation didn't decrease, but increased by 80% because of the inverted bottleneck layer, which is, a not, which is not an eff efficient model um, due to the limited capacity of the uh, depth-wise convolution. And they have to expand the number of channels to compensate for the uh, loss of accuracy. As a result, the peak activation is a lot larger than uh, our budget. So given a microcontroller that has only 320 kilobytes, the amount of memory required by, um, by the um, mobile net is far um, more than what we have. As a result, conventional uh, frameworks like TensorFlow Lite, micro can only uh, classify those simple tasks like apples and oranges. We propose MCU net that can push forward a big leap that we can uh, do full-scale image net classification on this uh, microcontroller. So the key idea is system and algorithm co-design. Conventional method with neural architecture search, search an efficient neural network model on an existing library, uh, for example, our, our proxy DAS and MNASNet. Another branch of work a tuned deep learning library given an existing uh, model, such as the TDM. Our approach is to co-design the efficient neural architecture together with the efficient compiler and runtime by using this MCU net. It contains two, two, two parts. The tiny NAS stands for tiny neural architecture search and the tiny engine, the tiny inference engine. It co-designs the efficient neural architecture and the efficient compiler and the runtime, which is a system algorithm co-design. Such co-design opens up a much larger design space than only designing the neural architecture or only designing the inference engine. 
So tiny NAS is a two-stage neural architecture search for tiny microcontrollers. So the search space design is crucial for neural architecture search performance, but there is no expertise, a prior expertise on MCU model design. To fit a 200, 320 kilobytes of SRAM, there are multiple choices. You can use a, a larger width, a smaller resolution, or a smaller width, but a larger resolution. Which, which one is better? So we first optimize the search space given the full network design space and do neural architecture search on this narrowed down, uh, narrowed design space. Searching an efficient neural architecture is like finding a needle in the haystack. And we want to reduce the search space first and then narrow down our search so that the search process can be more efficient so that it won't consume so many GPU hours. And here the idea is to train a once for all network after uh, we, uh, we narrow down the search space. This method can reduce the marginal cost uh, by a large margin and fit diverse hardware constraints. So this once for all network can be sparsely activated. So we can grab a different, uh, we can grab a larger subnetwork and also a smaller subnetwork. Each can function in, uh, independently without interfering with each other. So given a large microcontroller, we can deploy a larger model, a smaller microcontroller, we can deploy a smaller model so that we can fit diverse uh, hardware constraints by designing only one model once. Uh, this is an analogy to the uh, Russian doll where the smaller child networks are nested in the larger ones. In this method, we need to train only once so that we can pay only one time overhead of training and generate the entire Prado curve. The Prado curve is a trade-off between the latency and the accuracy. So given a larger latency, we can achieve a higher accuracy, um, lower latency, lower accuracy, but our approach consistently outperform uh, the current industry standard from Google, which is the mobile net version three, um, showing in blue and ours is showing in red. The interesting phenomenon is that we can generate the entire Prado curve, larger model and smaller model by training only once compared with the uh, Google, Google's approach. You need to train four times to get four models. We can train only one time, only once, but get a lot of uh, models in this trade-off curve. Uh, this approach also reduces the uh, marginal design cost uh, of a new neural network. So it also consistently outperformed the human baselines and it received the six first play finishes in the top, top competitions in efficient AI, including the IEEE low power computer vision challenge. And compared with conventional neural architecture search methods, which require 400,000 pounds of CO2 emission, uh, this method by using this uh, once for all network, the marginal cost is only 340 uh, pounds of CO2 emission. We have we will design a new model for a new different platform. And we uh, try to understand why such tiny neural architecture search better utilizes the memory. So um, the peak memory for the first two stages of mobile number two and the tiny NAS are shown below we can see that uh, mobile, the tiny NAS model is much more balanced compared with mobile number in two, where the difference between the max and the average is 2.2x for mobile net, uh, but it's only 1.6 times compared with tiny NAS. So tiny NAS designed the network with more uniform peak memory for each, for each block, allowing us to fit a larger model given the same amount of memory. So using this method, we bring AI to IoT devices, uh, which can greatly shrink the amount of memory by uh, up to four times and achieving a speed up, make it uh, three times faster compared with Google's uh, TensorFlow Lite Micro plus the mobile version two. 
and the accuracy is greatly improved from 54% uh, to more than 70%, uh, a 17% increase of the top line accuracy on ImageNet. So every 1% of Im improvement is important. So here, 16% uh, ImageNet accuracy improvement is actually a big deal, given that we only have, uh, only have two megabytes of uh, flash and 50, 512 kilobytes of SRAM. That's a small, very tiny res um, device that we have. We also experimented with uh, several other applications, including the wake words, including the visual wake words. Um, so person detection uh, to detect a person or no person so that, uh, which is helpful for the smart home applications and also for the audio applications such as the um, audio wake words, like the Google speech command, you can uh, wake the devices by, hey Alexa, hey Siri, etc. So we find that the system algorithm co-design give the best result. So on the full ImageNet classification on the STM32 microcontroller that has only 320 kilobytes of SRAM, one megabyte of flash, the thousand class ImageNet classification baseline with Google's Mobile Navi 2 plus ARMS well-optimized CMC's NN gives only 40% top end accuracy, making it barely usable. By switching um, the CMC's NN with our tiny engine, tiny inference engine, we can improve the accuracy to 44%. By switching Mobile Navi 2 version 2 to tiny NAS, we can improve it to 56%. But by combining tiny NAS with tiny engine, the accuracy improved to 62%, which is a big improvement by such algorithm and system code design. And this once for all approach can handle diverse hardware platforms. So on different microcontrollers from a 256 kilobyte to all the way to 512 kilobytes, we can use are the same once for all network and pick the specialized sub networks to get a much better accuracy compared with the baseline models. It is first to achieve more than 70% image that image net top point accuracy on commercial microcontrollers. 70% accuracy on a GPU is not challenging at all, but on a microcontroller that has only 512 kilobytes of SRAM and two megabytes of flash. This used to be very challenging, but uh, the tiny NAS and tiny engine provides a breakthrough result that can finally match the accuracy on a desktop machine with only a small amount of memory on a microcontroller. And if we profile the uh, weight and activation, we can find the um, MCU net reduced the number of parameters by more than 25, uh, 24 times and the activation is reduced by more than 13 times. And here is a result on the visual wake words data set. Compared with conventional approaches, we can uh, make it a more than 2, .2 times faster and three times faster and 3.7 times smaller compared with uh, baseline approaches while delivering better accuracy. And on the audio wake words, data set, the speech command, the audio weak words, uh, we can achieve either 2% higher accuracy or uh, more than 2.8 times faster inference speed uh, all the way up to uh, four, and up to 4.1 times smaller memory footprint compared with conventional methods. And here is a live demo. We have this microcontroller attached to a screen and also has a camera in front of it. In front of it. it is the STM32 F746 commercial microcontroller costing roughly $10. And here is the board. It has um, 320 kilobytes of SRAM, one megabyte of flash ARM Cortex-M7 running at 216 megahertz. It can process uh, two max per, per cycle, so roughly 432 mega ops per second. So very poor computational resource and has no DRAM and no, no operating system, just a bare metal microcontroller. Using uh, Google's TF Lite micro with MobileNet, 
uh, the model runs only 75% top end accuracy, roughly 2.9 time uh, frames per second. With our approach, we can accelerate it to 7.3 frames per second, and the accuracy improved to 87%. So as you can see here, when we detect there is a person, the screen turns red. Okay, so we also applied um, our efficient AI technique to build this fast LiDAR net to accelerate point, point cloud recognitions. So point cloud recognition is an essential part of LiDAR perception, very important for autonomous driving. Since LiDAR generates 3D point cloud at a high frame rate, roughly more than 2 million points per second. So conventional algorithms run pretty slow on the GPU, so roughly five frames per second. And with our GPU kernel optimization, we pushed forward the speed uh, to 18 frames per second. And if we uh, co-design with our fast LiDAR net, it can improve the frame rate to 47 frames per second. So we can drive a real car using this uh, fast LiDAR net, uh, but deliver uh, robust and also efficient inference on the autonomous driving vehicle. So we tested the three uh, scenarios, all driverless, uh, turning left, uh, going straight, and also making a right turn. And the car can run smoothly. With conventional models running only five frames per second, that is too slow. But 47 frames per second is um, capable of, of delivering such good um, demo results. Okay, now let's switch gear from inference to training. And let me introduce this tiny TL, reduce the memory, not the parameters for efficient on-device learning. So we not only want to run inference on edge devices, but also training so that we can adapt to newly collected data on the edge device. Since a lot of applications needs uh, customization, so AI systems need to continually adapt to new data collected from the sensors. So conventional approach need the cloud-based learning method where the edge device translate the new training data and the label to the cloud server. Cloud server do the learning and also and finally uh, returns the updated model. We want to uh, remove the demand for the cloud server and perform on-device learning so that user data won't be uh, won't need to transmit to the data center, which uh, guarantees the security since the data cannot leave the devices because of security and regularization. However, training memory is much more, much more than inference, which is a big bottleneck uh, of the on-device training. So edge devices have a tight memory constraint. The training memory footprint of deep neural nets can easily exceed the limit. Um, and edge devices are energy constrained, failing to fit the training process into the energy efficient on-chip SRAM which significantly increase the energy cost. So Raspberry Pi has a DRAM of 256 megabytes and the microcontroller has only two megabytes. But this red bar is the memory footprint for, of our training. Uh, with batch size of eight, it already exceeded the memory of a Raspberry Pi, not to mention the microcontroller. So activation is the main bottleneck, not the parameters. For example, the Resident 50, the activation for training is more than uh, six times larger. So MobileNet reduced the parameters. However, it doesn't in decrease the activation much, only 10%, 1.1x. So the main bottleneck does not improve much. Previous methods focus on reducing the number of trainable parameters or flops actually the main bottleneck does not improve much. So one method to solve this issue is to fine tune only the last classifier had. This is efficient, but the capacity is limited. And you can see the accuracy also significantly decreased 
you can see on the left figure, the accuracy decreased from more than 86% accuracy to only 50%. But our approach, shown in green, can fully preserve the accuracy, but greatly reduce the memory consumption by six times. So here is the observation. Updating the weight is very memory expensive, but updating biases is very memory efficient. Therefore, um, if we only update the bias, we don't need to store those intermediate activations, which is memory expensive. So here we can reduce the uh, memory cost by 12 times by freezing the weights and only fine tune the biases. However, it also hurt the accuracy. So 16.3% loss of accuracy. So how do we guarantee the accuracy, but also keep the memory footprint small? So we propose this light residual learning, adding this um, light residual branch that has only 4% of memory overhead, which consists of a down sample um, OP, a group convolution that aggressively down samples um, uh, the, the channels um, and also the uh, resolution and using a fewer number of flops. And finally, we use this one by one convolution and upsample it to the original uh, resolution. Given that the uh, depth wise layer requires six, uh, six times the channel number, while ours is only 0 0.5 times the channel, num channel number, the ch this, ch uh, this branch is much more uh, memory efficient. And adding this, uh, this branch also significantly improved the accuracy so that you can see on the right hand side, we can match the top and uh, the uh, accuracy compared with fine tuning the full network. So further experiment, we find we can um, compare, we compare the training memory, which is the X axis and the accuracy on the Stanford car data set. So with the same accuracy, we can achieve 4.6 times memory saving uh, com compared with uh, conventional approaches. And similar observation is found on other data sets like flower data set, cars data set, and also the food data set. The memory reduction ranges from 4.5 times to 6.5 times without losing the accuracy. Further, we can enable fully in-cache training by using batch, batch size of one together with group, uh, group normalization. With this approach, we can aggressively push the frontier of the memory re uh, requirement to only 16 megabytes, which is a typical L3 cache size, enabling feeding the training process into the cache, which is much more energy efficient than training uh, that require DRAM. So our goal is to enable this on-device training and also inference uh, so that we can better preserve user's accuracy, reduce the carbon footprint, reduce the latency, and make, make it toward greener AI and IoT, AIoT. So last but not least, uh, we also want to improve the data efficiency. So I'll propose, I'll present this differentiable augmentation for data efficient GAN training. So data is expensive. This FFHQ data set contains 70,000 um, post-processed human faces. And this ImageNet data set contains millions of images from diverse categories. It takes months or even years to collect the data along with prohibitive annotation costs. However, if we reduce the amount of training data, the quality deteriorates very quickly. For example, using only 100 Obama faces, the generated face is highly deteriorated. With only 160 cat, the generated image, you can see there's no eyes, the, the mouth and, and the nose is also distorted. Similar for the dog data set, uh, the generated quality is very poor given uh, only hundreds of images. 
And quantitatively, um, the gas hybrid deteriorate from 100% training data to 20% to 10%. The measurement is using this metric called FID. The better, uh, so the lower the FID, the better the quality. The higher the FID, the lower the quality. So given only 10% of the training data, uh, the quality deteriorates very quickly. And you can see that um, discriminator begins to overfit uh, when there is less data. So with only 20% of the training data, the discriminator's training accuracy is pretty high, but um, the validation accuracy of the discriminator is pretty low. With 10% of the training data, the overfitting phenomenon is even more severe. So one approach is to augment the real images only. So one image becomes multiple images. Um, however, this generated image will suffer from the artifacts um, which will appear on the generated images. For example, color jittering, translation, and also cutoff. So the, um, so the artifacts that is from, coming from the augmentation will also appear on the generated images. The second approach is to augment both the real and the fake images for the discriminator. However, such unbalanced optimization cripples the training. Um, so, the t, uh, trans, so on the TX and TGX, the discriminator has pretty high accuracy. But on the real uh, true generated images, the accuracy is pretty low. So the solution, uh, which is our third approach, is to augment both the real and the fix for both discriminator and also the generator. So both the real and the fake images will be um, color jittered with translation with cutout. And then we can back propagate the loss back to the generator and the discriminator. So in this approach, with only 10% of training data, we can well preserve the quality as shown in, the, in this red bar. And using such low short generation, uh, the baseline method is on the left. With our approach, the generated image has much more better quality. So the Obama face is more photorealistic uh, with different um, angles, it looks very natural. And for the cats, you can see the eyes and also the, the nose and the mouth is much um, fo more photorealistic for the similar for the dogs. And compared with other fine tuning methods, uh, we require that requires 70,000 images, we require only 100 images. So there's orders of magnitude of reduction, while the quality measured in FID is well preserved compared with conventional um, methods that require 70,000 training images. And here is a demo showing the interpolation result, indicating that our diff augment method not just remember the uh, seen data, but also generalize to those unseen scenario, like from spring to the, to the fall, and also on the bottom right corner from the evening to the daytime, and different angles of the posture for both Obama face and the cats, dog, and, and the panda. Okay, so in summary, today I presented tiny machine learning and efficient deep learning to, toward greener, faster, and smaller, more compact AI and more efficient AI. From cloud AI to mobile AI to tiny AI, the hardware resource is getting smaller and smaller. Um, but we want to enable deep learning even on this smaller, uh, smaller devices that has very tight computational resource. So we optimize both the computation efficiency and also the data efficiency. For the computational efficiency, we want to we propose this MCU net for IoT devices for inference, and tiny TL for efficient training on on those edge devices. And for the data efficiency, we propose that this differentiable augmentation for data efficient GAN training that require only 100 images and can compare the quality that used to require 70,000 training images. We believe such line of work um, 
will enable much uh, more innovations for both the algorithm side and also the system and AI chip side of deep neural nets. Since it opens the door from this, for those on-chip, fully on-chip learning that require very limited uh, memory bandwidth and available, available memory resources. So we can run those deep neural nets on these tiny devices uh, toward greener and more efficient AI. And we have lots of open source code and demos and tutorials on our GitHub, YouTube, and website. Uh, thank you for your attention. I'm very glad to answer questions. Thank you.